Emmanuel Stewart by his side, training Cotto for the first time, and now they leave the dressing room area to come to the ring, which is in right center field here in Yankee Stadium. So Roy Jones, this is a guy who only seeks to fight the best, by and large, and he was given a chance in his battles with Margarito and with Pacquiao. Of course, the Margarito loss may or may not have been legitimate, and the Pacquiao loss, maybe he fought the wrong fight. This is a real trial for this guy to get himself back into the mode of believing he can win tonight. He has a real trial as a great opportunity because in those fights he lost, he fought against two big punches. But this guy is not a big puncher. Therefore, he should be able to go in a little bit more relentlessly and try to land his big punch to find out what this bigger guy can take. But there's still questions of whether Foreman can endure his punches or not. And the Gellis moving up to 154 pounds for the first time. Actually, there was evidence in Madison Square Garden last year that Miguel does respond to crowd noise. Clearly, Puerto Rican fans helped him to his win over Joshua Black. Yeah, you know, Miguel Cotto, when he was a younger guy, Jim, was uncomfortable training with his uncle, uncomfortable training in Puerto Rico, uncomfortable making the weight at 140 and maybe even 147. And he fought that way, like a fighter who been made to feel uncomfortable, like a rough, rugged guy. And then recently, he left his uncle, and he moved his training camp, camp to Tampa, and he moved up in weight. All things that made him feel more comfortable. And Jimmy's been fighting like a more comfortable fighter without that edge. We'll see if Emmanuel Stewart has made him uncomfortable enough to regain his edge tonight. A man with as many difficult fights on his dossier as anyone else in the sport over the course of the past few years. And Roy Jones, Max Kellerman and I called his fight against Manny Pacquiao from ringside in November. So let's take a look at what happened and you tell us your perspective on Toto's trial against Pacquiao. Basically, I think what happened here is he came out, he's trying to bang with Pacquiao, but he's a little too slow, he's doing big punches, and that's why he's big punches with him. Because are sharper, I mean, not sharper. Pacquiao's much sharper, quicker puncher. These short, quick punches are what really got to him. And that's what I'm afraid of for him tonight. Because this guy's not a power puncher, he's a short, quick puncher. Pacquiao's a powerful, quick puncher. So we'll see what he can take. Also, we want to find out in this fight, how much did the Mark Reader fight to to take out of him? Should his trainer, Joe Santiago, have thrown in the towel much earlier than the 12th round when the fight was eventually stopped? Yes, he did, because he allowed him to take much more punishment than he needed to take, especially being that he took so much punishment from uh, Mark Rito, who already had bad hand wraps. And you know, losing to Manny Pacquiao is like losing to Roy when Roy was in his prime. What are you going to do? I mean, how do you counteract what Pacquiao does? Now here's your opponent, who on the undercard that night won this 154-pound title belt against a Puerto Rican fighter, Daniel Santos. But Santos, who had not fought in 16 months and who barely made weight for the fight, was clearly not anywhere near in shape, and he made it an easy night for Gordon. Yeah, he did. And this guy, once again, Santos was a big puncher, much like Cotto, who depended on catching this guy knocking him out. But he couldn't catch him, and when he did catch him, he couldn't hurt him. As a matter of fact, this guy, Yuri, turned out to knock Santos down and become a power puncher more so than Santos was. It's really an interesting conundrum, Max. There's no comparison in the competition they faced. Cotto has fought in a different league. There's no comparison in the punishment they've taken. Yuri Foreman is largely untouched compared to Cotto, who has taken as much punishment as any fighter. Yes, Yuri Foreman does have some tough wins, and some people even thought he lost to Thompson, for instance, but some tough wins against the fighters in the kind of fights that make you tougher, that get you ready for moments like this, you would think. But clearly, Cotto has faced a who's who of boxing in and around his weight division, and Foreman hasn't faced anything like that kind of competition. He's never faced an event like this or a moment like this, Roy. How much of a change can it bring? It can bring a lot of change, but the thing about it is we have an awesome God. God has prepared him for this already. He went from country to country to country to pursue this, and now he's here at the Mecca, the biggest place for boxing. There's no way he should be scared to stand up under this pressure. There are the notable wins for Yuri Foreman. Both fighters are in the ring. There's a wellspring of excitement in Yankee Stadium. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introduction.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the home of the 40-time American League champion, 27-time Major League Baseball World Champion, New York Yankees. This is Yankee Stadium, and this is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Presented by Bob Arum's top-ranked boxing in association with the New York Yankees. And sponsored by Under Armour, the most technical performance apparel and footwear brand in the world. And AT&T, rethink possible with AT&T. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairwoman Melvina Lathan, WBA President Gilberto Mendoza. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Dan Ackerman, Tony Paolillo, and Steve Weisfeld. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Arthur Mercanti Jr. And now, we return to a legendary sports tradition, a title fight, outdoors in a ballpark. From Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York City, New York, USA. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing Yankee pinstripes, officially weighing in at 153, one half pounds. His professional record, 34 victories, including 27 knockouts, with only two defeats. The challenger, former two-time light welterweight world champion, former welterweight world champion from Carlos, Puerto Rico, Miguel Angel. with gold, official weight 154 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one, consisting of 28 fights, 28 victories, including eight knockouts by way of Haifa, Israel, now training and fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, the reigning, defending, undefeated, WBA, super welterweight, Champion of the world, Yuri Harman. Can he get the jab there against the taller foreman? 